So at this point, we've created a fairly useful setup that allows us to take newly provisioned servers and turn them into more specific servers that meet our needs. Now I've found that even on little Ansible projects, it's really easy to build up this kind of cruft where we've got this Ansible Python interpreter duplicated variable amongst all our host entries. And we can fix this by moving that particular variable into the all group vars. In other words, these are variables that are gonna be applied to all our hosts. Now in moving this variable, we're gonna see the stark contrast between using the INI style syntax or the production inventory file with no file extension versus what happens when you put this into a YAML file we have to swap from the something equals something style syntax to a more key value oriented syntax. Now at this point in proceedings, it would make a lot of sense to delete all those Ansible Python interpreter entries from production.yaml. But for whatever reason, when I was recording this video, I decided I would not do that at that point. So you do that, I will do that momentarily. What I am going to do is move the production file to be called production.yaml. I'm going to add my three YAML dashes at the top of a YAML file. And then I'm going to start by declaring all our hosts. So this is literally a key of all under which we have a key of hosts. And the task is simply to go through each of the entries that we've got as a host, replacing any of the variables that we've declared with the YAML style syntax. So instead of something equals something, it's going to be something colon something. Now at this point, I'm thinking, why didn't I just replace the Ansible Python interpreter variable and its value when I already had it selected? But there you go, it's gone now. And I need to make the change of converting Ansible host equals into Ansible host colon. Now there's probably a way to do this as a ninja shortcut using VS Code. Honestly, I'm still trying to get used to it from switching across from WebStorm. I think I prefer the key bindings from WebStorm if I'm honest. I'll spare you having to watch me tidy up each of these lines. Now what follows next is how we convert the INI or any file style groups into the YAML style groups. And for this, we need to declare a new key of children and under children, we can declare any groups that we need. So in our case, we've got the Rancher 2 Kubernetes nodes. And inside that group, we had all these different hosts of etcd, control plane and worker types. Now again, there's a difference between what we had and what we want. The colons are really important now. Defining the Rancher 2 load balancers group is done in the exact same way. We have an arbitrary key under which we have a value of hosts. And then in there, we list out our hosts ending in a colon. Doesn't matter whether you have one or many. One thing that I've found myself doing is adding in extra spaces between the logical groups of my hosts. This is purely a visual thing. It makes no impact to your config. One thing that's particularly easier to model, in my opinion, when using YAML is the concept of groups inside groups. So if we think of our Rancher 2 Kubernetes nodes group as being like the top level, and under there we'd have nodes that are for etcd, nodes that are for our control plane, nodes that are for our workers, and so on. This is kind of going beyond the needs of this example, but in the real world you may have some of your nodes in Europe, some of them in America, and things like that as again, Kubernetes is used typically in much larger infrastructures. So it's nice that Ansible gives us that level of granularity. The only thing remaining to do at this stage is to ensure that you update your make file to use production.yaml instead of the old production without a file extension, and we should be good to go.